for a lot, Julia. Then tell me, what's wrong with trying to make life a little bit more pleasant? Nothing, I suppose. It's such a small thing, waving goodbye. I do the same for you. I'm family. Why, Julia? Sounds as if you're jealous. Me? Certainly not. But she is only a lodger. Come to that. So are you. Listen. I was pleased to have you here, and just as pleased to have Philippa. She's had a lot to contend with. How would you feel if your husband had died so young, leaving you with a child? I don't know. I haven't gotten married in my teens. I'm not so daft. Well, Julia, the problem is we're not all as worldly as you are. I'm sorry, Aunt Lenny. No, there's no need. No, no, I've been spiteful, and believe it or not, I rather like Philippa. We seem to be on the same wavelength. But you do make too much fuss, of all of us. But I like having young people around me. When your mother asked if you could stay here, I was obliged. It meant I could indulge myself. Oh, I can't find it, Letty. I can't find it anywhere. What, dear? It's Friday. All day, dear? Yes. Oh, Friday the 13th, to be precise. Ominous. Dear, oh, what was I saying, Letty? Uh, you couldn't find it, buddy dear. Oh, exactly. I can't find it anywhere. Have you seen it? Let's start at the beginning, Bunny. Oh. It's Friday. I always read it Friday morning after breakfast. Oh, the Gazette, you mean? Exactly. That's what I've been telling you. Yes, sir. Oh, I can't find the chipping leg on Gazette <coughs> anywhere. Oh, dear. Oh, you don't think they've gone on strike, do you? They wouldn't do that, Bunny. Not here. <laughs> what a lovely thought. A strike. Here. Picket lines, headlines in the national press. We might even be on the wireless. Reporters on Chipping Cleghorn refuse to report the Vicar's garden party. Things like that don't happen here, Julia. No, nothing happens here. It's another world, isn't it? Just as well, too. Listen to this. It's marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. Oh, Patrick, do tell us what it is. We're all dying to know. Oh, dear. In that no Dolly? Have a bad dream last night? A nightmare, and it was all about you. It's better than being ignored. What's so marvelous, Patrick? Well, the person who called me this rag out, Letty. It's better than ever than home. Listen to this. <laughs> Young woman said to be excitingly beautiful seeks companionship with mature man. Love, marriage, Rolls Royce owners only. Really, Bernie, I'm surprised at you. Wouldn't a belly owner be just as suitable? Patrick, you know very well, young man, that Bunny always reads the paper first. I don't have many rules in this house, but that's one. She's been looking everywhere for it. She could have borrowed Mitzi's. Mitzi? Oh, she thinks it would help her to speak English. Oh, dear me, no. I couldn't. I really couldn't. I've only got to walk past the kitchen and she snarls at me. Oh, she's horrid, that Millie. Uh, Mitzi, dear. Yes. Well, you won't have to ask for Bunny. So you Bunny. Thank you, Patrick. I promise I won't borrow it again. Why aren't you at college? This wouldn't have happened if you'd been at college. I haven't got a lecture for this afternoon. Oh, that branch you get, and you never seem to do anything. It's not my fault. Uh, just read your paper, Lucky. You know, Patrick, you are very lucky. I'm quite willing to go to my lectures. It's one giant holiday for him. Oh, thanks for nothing, sister. Anyway, let's just talk about a holiday. You've got the whole day off. Only because I've worked overtime every night this week. Ha! Huh, pull the other one. I wouldn't be surprised if you had been working overtime at all. But to the picture's more likely. My goodness, you two. Did you always bicker like this at home? He did. I didn't. Letty? Letty? Yes, Bonnie, what is it? Letty, dear, what does it mean? Well, well I won't know unless you tell me, Bunny. Here, in the Gazette, right at the bottom of the personal column. Yes, dear? It's an announcement. How nice. No, no, you don't understand. No, I know I don't, Bunny. It says, oh dear, I can't bear to read it. But you will. Yes. A murder is announced and will take place on Friday, October the 13th, at Little Paddocks at 6.30 p.m. Friends, please accept this. The only intimation. Letty. Are you sure that's what it says? Right at the bottom. This house, the little palace. Yes. Read it again, Bunny. A murder is announced. It will take place on Friday, October the 13th. Today! I knew something dreadful was going to happen. Julia, just a moment ago you were complaining that nothing happens here. Uh, finish it, Bunny. At Little Paddocks at 6.30 p.m. Friends, please accept this. The only intimation. Let me see it. It's a joke. Well, I mean, it has to be. Who'd be daft enough to advertise a real murder in the newspapers? Madmen might. 
It's nothing to do with you, is it, Patrick? I'm not potty. <laughs> That's debatable. Oh, oh! I wouldn't put it past you. Well, it's nothing to do with me. Perhaps Philip can throw some light on us. No, it's not the sort of thing she goes to anyway. I agree. Well, whoever seems to do it thinks it's amusing. Oh, it frightens me. And there's nothing to be a frightened of, Bunny. But what will happen at 6.30? Delicious death. Oh, really, <laughs> Patrick? He means Mitzi's special cake. We always call it delicious death. Yes, Bunny. Friends, please accept this the only intimation. Somebody's bound to drop around. I figure, figure we might get her to make one. I'm sure you did. Listen, Bunny, nothing is going to happen at 6.30. Except Patrick is probably right in assuming that one or two people might drop in out of curiosity. Oh, it might turn into a party. It most certainly won't. So there's nothing to worry about, Bunny. Nothing at all. You really think so? Of course. Good. That makes me feel better. We'll all laugh about it in the morning, Bunny. Yes. Someone is after me. I'm going to be murdered in my bed. Murdered? It is here. It's a gazette. Someone is after me. Whoever put that silly advert in the paper did it with the precise intention of sending this house into total chaos. It will happen in this house if I stay tonight. It will happen at 6.30 tonight. You don't understand. Mitzi, no one's going to murder you. It's a joke. I not laugh, I go. Well, nevertheless, I don't think it has anything to do with you. You don't understand. Once you have escaped, they never let you get away. But I thought you did get away. They hound me, day and night, night and day. The telephone calls, you wonder what they are, who they are from. What telephone calls? Agents from my country. Why? Why do you think they keep warning me? I expect they want to know how you're getting along over here, Millie. <laughs> but, Mitzi, I've never even seen you get a phone call. They do it in secret. They don't like that I escape from them. Oh, you don't understand. The delegations, the light shining from my eyes, my family, they sent them to Siberia! Mitzi, do be sensible about this. No one is coming to get you, no spies, no agents. So calm yourself down. Here's what I suggest you do. Go get the beef out of the pantry and make that special goulash of yours for lunch. You like my goulash, eh? Yes, it's simply delicious. I tell you then, I make it extra special tonight. I had bread and rich and wine from Hungary. Makes my mouth water just to think of it. You do that. Incidentally, I think that one or two people might drop in around 6.30 this evening. To murder me! No, no, no. Why would they come? For a drink, perhaps, and maybe a sandwich. You know you make such good sandwiches, Mitzi. It will be okay? Yes, everything will be fine. You are right. I am a good cook, no? I make a dip too. Yes, but not too much garlic. You don't like garlic? Yes, I do, but in moderation. The last time you put way too much in and we were totally isolated at church on Sunday, and that was two days after we'd eaten it. I tell you then, I have three cloves instead of my usual seven, so it won't be nearly as good. I go now. Too long you've been keeping me guys bugging. <laughs> Well done, Aunt Letty. Yes, beautifully handled. I shall have you to an agreement for once. Oh, Letty was always very good with people. She could have gone a long way. Long way indeed. Bunny, oh. no more reminiscing. Young people aren't interested in the past these days. Oh, dear me, I'm so silly. I get so bothered lately. I'm sorry, Letty. Really and truly sorry. It's all right, Bunny. I wasn't angry with you. But you're so right. I get so muddled lately and I must think before I say something. It's okay, Bunny. We all understand. Just read your paper. You know how much you enjoy that, dear. Yes, that's what I'll do, but I won't read that advertisement again, Letty. No, don't do that. Mitzi could be right, though. We could all be murdered in our beds. No, dear. The advertisement says 6.30. I doubt we'll be in our beds by then, will we? No, we won't, will we? No, so everything will be fine. We could be murdered down here. Just see. Easily is upstairs. Funny. Oh, don't do that, Letty, please. Oh, then. For a moment there, I could see Mitzi clearing off and me having to do the cooking from now on. And you needn't to make any comment, thank you very much. I was just wondering where to tell where line Mitzi is. We all know she doesn't get any phone calls. What about her parents being sent to Siberia? Last time she told us they were executed in the Red Square. Well, she stood there in the snow with the tears freezing on her cheeks. We must be sympathetic towards her. It must be difficult having no one from your background, no one you can talk to. 
I suppose that's why she tells all those stories. Lies, you mean? Yes, I do, but I think I can see why she does it. But why are the stories always such doom, gloom, and disaster? Because that's what she enjoys reading, like some people enjoy reading murder mysteries. The front door was open. I do hope I'm not intruding. Oh, not at all, Miss Marple. Only I popped in to deliver these to Miss Bunny. Oh, how lovely. You remember you admired them so at the vicarage the other day. I told my nephew and he insisted I bring some along for you. Oh, look, Letty, aren't they lovely? It's so unusual in the autumn. Yes, my grandmother was able to grow them up until the winter months. I do adore Violet. Yes, there's something very sentimental about them. Don't you think so, Julia? You do have a very romantic nature, Miss Marple. Do I? But I do see what you mean. Well, I don't think Patrick does. There's no romance in his soul. Well, you're only his sister. You probably wouldn't even see it if it was there. Where should these go, Letty? I want everyone to enjoy them. Oh, what about over here on the table? There's even a vase waiting for them. Oh, there's already water in it. it. Must be stale. I'll get some fresh. Won't be a minute. Do sit down, Miss Marple. I've been meaning to talk to you about Bunny's birthday party on Sunday. I know she'd love it if you were there. Thank you. I adore parties. Perhaps there's a that did help. I'll be having Aunt Letty, Miss Marple. I'll be having Letty, Miss Marple. Julia. Well, you'll be in bed until noon, and you spend the rest of the day snoring in an armchair, so we can't rely on you for any help. The announcement in the Gazette, what does it mean? Oh, you saw that, didn't you? I should think everybody in Chippy Claghorn has seen that by now. Has it anything to do with Miss Bunny's birthday? We've no idea what it means. It's probably some crank who thinks he's being funny. I see. I thought it was an invitation to play some sort of new game or something. The murder game? Sounds good, doesn't it? If you're interested, Miss Marble, you can come around at 6.30 this evening. Oh yes, do, Miss Marble. I'd love to, but I have to go into Menham Wells for my treatment, and I'm not sure how long that's going to take. I'll do my best, though. Is your rheumatism much better? Very much, thank you. The spa waters are so good. Give it another week, and I shall be back in St. Mary Mead. Check the clock won't be the same without you. I shall miss it here, although I don't think my niece will be overly sorry when I leave. They've been very patient with me. Would they like to come tonight? I'm sure they'd love to. My nie niece is very like me. He loves the mystery, but they're having dinner with the bishop. Oh, it would have been rather reassuring to the vicar here. No your neighbours, you won't be alone. The Colonel and Mrs. Easterbrook for a start. Uh, no, they're in Bournemouth. Clara Swettingham wouldn't miss an opportunity like this. And young Edmund, with two beautiful young girls staying here. <sighs> There's someone I could do without, and Philippa says he's a layabout. I thought he was a writer. Well, he is, but she says it's a poor excuse not to get a real job and work for a living. Perhaps she's got a point. Do thank the vicar for me, Miss Marple. I'm touched. I really am. So kind of him. He was delighted you'd notice them. He brought the original cutting back from Devon, the Dart Valley. He was born there. Oh, Devon Violets, there's nothing quite like them. Well, I really ought to be going now. I hope all will be well this evening. What? The announcement in the Gazette a murder is to take place here at 6.30. Oh dear, yes. If it wasn't a joke or some sort of game, it should be very worrying for all of you. We're made of sterner stuff than you think, Miss Marple, I assure you. But surely, Miss Blacklock, if there's going to be a murder, there has to be a victim. If I were you, the question I'd ask myself is, who's going to be murdered?
sandwiches I put the pate. Pate? Not my pate. It is simply delicious. It was a present for fortune. I'm, I was saving it for a special occasion, Mitzi. You tell me to make sandwiches, I make them. I was rather thinking cheese. Your English cheese, it is like soap. Well, we like it. When do you need me anymore? Uh, no, Mitzi. Are you going somewhere? I have things to do in the dining rooms and I lock myself up. Well, before you disappear, could you please let the, fr the guests in the front door when they arrive? I decided to lock it this evening. I have everything here. Head cook and bucket washer. Bottle washer. Yes, that too. Not long now. Aren't you worried? Why should I be? Supposing this isn't some hoax. Supposing someone's going to be a murder here tonight. Oh, Julia, you're the last person I thought would believe in all this. Well, I do have a few butterflies in my stomach. Then have a drink and relax. What bothers me most is Miss Marple's comment. Forget it. Miss Marple's a real old busybody. She relishes this sort of thing. But quite a clever old busybody. And if she's right, who's going to be the victim? No one is. It's just someone who I've wronged and forgotten about or lent some money to. It, it's nothing. Well, it has to be someone in this house. Patrick, there are times I could throttle him. Then there's Bunny. Oh, poor Bunny. What a horrible thought. I've seen you driven to distraction by her before now. Well, we've been friends for quite many years. She can get irritating, but... Oh, poor Bunny. Well, on a happier note, perhaps it'll be Mitzi who gets the chop. She gets on my nerves. That's not a good enough reason to murder her, Julia. Philippa puzzles me. Who is she? Where does she come from? You know exactly who she is and where she comes from. We've only got her word for it. Same goes for you and Patrick. But Mother wrote you asked if we could stay here. How do I know it wasn't a forgery? I see what you mean, but it wasn't. And I believe you, just as I believe Philippa. The show will take place about uh, 6.30 and this room will be the scene of the crime, I suppose. This is a crazy story, Matthew. It, it just doesn't make sense. If someone intends killing a murder, why not announce it in a newspaper for everyone to see? I would have thought that wise people crying about it. You're right, Philippa. This is crazy. It's got to be a madman. What about a mad woman? It's a wonder the police have a murder out here. Well, I'm sure they don't believe it for one second. Do you? No, of course not. It's too silly for words. You don't sound too sure of yourself. Well, I am. It's probably just someone who wants an excuse for a drink. Well, then he's rather getting on top of you, isn't it? No, it isn't. I'm sorry, but you just keep going on and on about it. It's nonsense, and I've heard enough. Understand? Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, quack. Is there something wrong, Bunny? Oh, infernal noise they make. Letty, they're all out on the back lawn. Oh, <coughs> ducks, I've forgotten to lock them up. <coughs> you haven't been out there like that. Like what? Without a coat on. Oh, only to the bottom of the garden. Throw some rubbish away. Dr. Robinson would be very annoyed at you, and I'm not sure I shan't tell him. Please don't. You'll be the death of me, Bunny. I can do it. No, you've been at work all day. Relax. I'll go. No, Patrick, I'd rather do it myself. If I'd had my galoshes on, I would have done it for her. I noticed you say discreetly in the background. Afraid of giving your hands dirty? No, my new dress is a matter of fact. That must have cost a bomb. A friend bought it for me. Oh, like that, is it? Ask no questions. Death wore black chiffon. I beg your pardon? Well, if you're the murderer, a death wore black chiffon would be quite appropriate, wouldn't it? If you're trying to be funny. I once read a book called that. Are you sure, Bunny? Oh, no, no, that wasn't it. It was called, uh, Death Wore Black Lingerie. No, 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 or what was it? It was, oh, it was Death Wore a Bra and Panties. Oh, that's it. Oh, nice book, though there were some parts I didn't quite understand. <laughs> Patrick, there's something you can do for me. Anything. This sherry, there's not very much left. Please get rid of this one and fill it new one. There's more than that bottle. Well, it's been open a long time, but... Here is Mrs. Swettenham and Edmund Swettenham. Thank you, you're welcome. <laughs> Why you laugh at me? It's got to use something else, honest. You, stay out of my kitchen! Mitzi. <sighs> Clara, Edmund, how nice of you to drop in. We were just passing, Nettie. Really? Is it that you're out, Edmund? 
Edmund. Yes, Mother. That's right. We were in the car, and I said to Edmund, who drives much too fast, you know. Oh, look, Edmund, it's little paddocks. Letty would never forgive us if we didn't stop in and say hello. And Edmund said, oh, what was it you said, darling? What a good idea. And I said, yes, isn't it? And so here we are. Well, how nice of you to think of us. Do sit down. Isn't it nice, funny? What is, Letty? Uh, that Clara and Edmund stopped by. Oh, but you said they'd be bound to call in. First in curiosity, after seeing the announcement in the Gazette. Uh, was it the one? Right at the bottom of the personal column. Oh, yes, I may have noticed it. When Julia said you'd be here to, oh, wild horses wouldn't keep you away. Uh, now that you are here. Totally unexpected. Patrick, let's have some drinks, shall we? Drinks, Patrick. Uh, right. Uh, Jerry, Mrs. Sweltier? Yes, please, thank you. Edmund? Thank you. But right, Philip, well, you looked rather busy this morning. Things got a more hectic after you left. Oh, I see. You shared secret meetings, eh? <laughs> Hatching something. There was nothing secret about anything. We're not hatching anything. No, no, by no means. You see, I had a call Dice Hall with some honey from Mrs. Lucas. That's your story. Julia. Yes, sir. I should be careful. I've got a few things might come up that the rest of us consider most peculiar. Drinks, everyone!
from here, it's that wall, and then shoots himself. Well, if you tripped, he could have done it accidentally, sir. Hmm. Are they up here now? Yes, sir, grumbling and moaning. Oh. And I should watch that Edmund Swettenham. Why? I should think he's a bit of a left-wing intellectual. I didn't get that impression last night. Well, he has been a bit bullshy with me, sir. He was having a go at the force this morning, spouting on and on about our Gestapo methods. Oh, Christ. But I was attract the awkward ones. You do seem to be the one picking them, sir. Why can't I get a nice, peaceful, law-abiding lot that do as they're told and answer my questions with a certain amount of civility? Not your style, sir. Once. Just once. That's all I ask. Somebody up there doesn't like me, Sergeant. And what's more, that lot out there are trying to compound the felony. Shall I wheel them in, sir? There's nothing else for it, is there? Afraid not. Oh, not that door. It's been sealed for years. Do come in, everyone. May I have your attention, please? Quiet, please. Please! That's very good of you. I do appreciate your cooperation. Inspector, it's Saturday. There's lots of shopping to be done. This is so inconvenient. I understand your problem, Mrs. Swettingham. But may I remind you, a man died here last night. Right on the spot where you're standing. And, whilst it may not seem overly important to you, it is to me and society in general. So, if it's not asking too much of you, I'd like you to push your shopping to the back of your mind for a while and answer a few questions. Oh, I've got there enough questions asked last night. Ah, well, perhaps you don't think the same way as me, young man. Yes, I should think that's the answer. We think differently. But, surely, if you cast your mind back, way, way back to last night, you'll surely recall I allowed you all to go home and get some rest on the condition you cooperate fully this morning. Well, it's perfectly clear what happened last night. That man, Cheers was his name, I believe? Yes. Broke in here, intending to steal from Miss Blocklock, or from the rest of us, fired the shots to scare us, stripped in the dark, and killed himself, the poor devil. I understand you're a bit of a writer. Yes, I do write. Well, I hope all your plots aren't as obvious as that. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be very interested in reading any of your books. <laughs> now, if we could get on with this. I am sure, Inspector, you'll find you are more than willing to answer your questions. But you must understand, it's been a great shock to us all. I appreciate that, Miss Blacklock. But you see, for a start, he didn't break in. No locks broken. No windows forced. He must have come in by the back door. I did. And as I was saying before Miss Marple interrupted me, there's your very bad habit of leaving the doors unlocked for all and sundry to come and go as they please. Well, I locked the front door. For once. And everyone in the village does it. Leaves their doors unlocked, I mean. Foolish. Very foolish. I suppose I must have left the back door a little unlocked when I went to feed the ducks. Now, Miss Blackrock, last night you said you knew this Rudy Shears. Hardly knew, Inspector. His father owned a small hotel business in Montreux. I visited there on occasion when I was visiting my sister in Switzerland. A few weeks ago, I was at the Spahn Hotel in Mendelin Wells, and he recognized me there. He came up to me and started talking about the hotel business, asking for advice, you know. But I must say, Inspector, that I did not recognize him at that meeting. Anyway, a few days ago, he called upon me here. He's been here before? Yes. I remember, Letty, you were very upset. He asked you for some money. Yes, he had some story about how his father was ill and he needed the airfare home. I thought it was all quite absurd. If his family's in the hotel business, surely they have the money to send him. So I refused. But the interesting thing, Spectre, was that he didn't even put up a fight. He just went away like a lamb. I see. I think he may have called to you, purely to look around, see the layout of the house, that sort of thing. Well, I hadn't thought about it until now, but yes, I suppose that's what he must have been up to. Not that it would have done him any good. I don't keep more than a few pounds on me. Valuables? Nothing really. Jewelry? Silver? Um, the silver's reasonable. Mitzi was polishing it last night. I not touch anything! It is nothing to you, secret police officer. You come in here, you blame me for everything. It is just like my home country, torture, interrogation. But I not crack, I not break. I told them nothing! Yeah! <laughs> she always like this. Torture me! You get nowhere! I am innocent! Innocent! I was in the dining room! That is my 100% alibi, as you say. And a very good...
good alibi it is. Perhaps too good on the surface. Now just sit down and try to remember I'm not too keen on the histrionics. I was in the dining room! I could have done anything with the wood! I don't want to be here any more than you do. There's a very good football match on at Milchester this afternoon that I'd very much like to see. But other things are more pressing. Please, could we continue this interrogation without any more interruptions? Of course, I suppose. Now, Miss Blacklock, we've established that you knew Rudy Shears. Excuse me, Inspector, I'm sorry to interrupt. I knew him too. You didn't mention this last night? I did. But you weren't here at the time, and, well, when you arrived, you rather neglected me. Did I? How? It was probably because I didn't arrive until after the, uh, action took place. Rather like turning to the end of the book to see who the killer is, eh? As an analogy, that doesn't work, because that's cheating. I usually guess who it is without resorting to those tactics. Do you turn to the last page? If only I could. You are new really shears, you said. I was staying at the Royal Spa whilst I was having intensive treatment for rheumatism. He made up my bill. Ah. Oh. There were one or two discrepancies, which I couldn't fail to notice, of course. Of course. It was clear to me that he was on the make, as they say in the trade. Naturally, when the errors were pointed out, he apologised profusely, but we both knew. Did you report him? There was nothing I could actually prove. It does seem to have been a bit of a villain. We'll know more soon. Let's just police her a background check on him. Now, I'd like you all to take up the exact positions you were in last night, as far as possible, that is, when the shots were fired. Would you like me to leave? I was coming up the drive. So you were outside near the shots, were you? I was, Inspector. As you will come to realise, I came through the back door. He meant to was banging about in the dining room. I let her out, and we both came in here. Tell what you can do. Keep an eye on her. I don't want her banging about again. I was not banging about! Shush! I was not in the shush! And shush again! Now, come along, everyone, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, the lights go out, a flashlight comes on, and lands on you. My hands went up. I thought it was a joke. Then he barked at me. I was so frightened, I put my hands up so high, just like this. Well, he couldn't very well complain of that, now could he? I thought he was going to shoot me. You're Miss Blacklock's niece, is that right? Well, yes. That's the sort of answer I like. Full of confidence. You are Miss Blacklock's niece. I just don't see that my relationship with Aunt Lenny has to do with it. May I suggest you leave me to figure that out? In any case, I was merely trying to establish who you were. You can check up on it if you'd like. I will. Your mother lives in the south of France, I understand. She's lived there for some time. It suits her health. Thank you. Mrs. Swaddingham. Yes? The light fell onto you next, Mrs. Swaddingham. Why, well, yes. I was totally dazzled. I couldn't see anything. I could just hear this voice. Frightening. Guttural. You haven't all this long returned to this country, is that right? Yes. My husband was in the diplomatic service. He died abroad. Naturally, I returned with my son. Where were you? Abroad, that is. Why, well, Turin? My husband was with the trade delegation there. Look, Inspector, I really don't see what my personal life has got to do with this. If my knowledge of geography has not entirely deserted me, Turin is not all that far from the Swiss border, is it? No. Thank you very much, Mrs. Swaddingham. Just what are you insinuating? The light will onto you next, didn't it? Yes, it did. Thank you very much. Uh, aren't you going to ask me more questions? Not right now. Miss Haynes, the light never fell on you at all, did it? No, it didn't. You're actually facing the door. Yes, that's right. Was it possible to see this man at all? Not really. It was difficult to see anything. Well, you were in a good position. It's very dark. I suppose I can make it a shape, but nothing more. I see. How long ago did your husband die? Why? What, what on earth does that got to do with this? I'd like to know when and why you came to live here. I still don't see what the relevance is. Does it strike you as odd that virtually all of you are newcomers to Chicken Leghorn? It's never occurred to me until now. Odd, though. I came here three months ago and I was offered a job, restoring the gardens at Dice Hall. I'm a trade book artist. That's nice, gardener. <laughs> Miss Bonner? You're not going to give me the third degree, are you, Inspector? Not today. But if you could tell me what you saw, if anything, I'd be very grateful. You're in a good position to see both Miss Blacklock and her gunman had the lights been on. 
Yes, I was. Now, I want you to think very hard and tell me what you remember before the lights went out. Before? Yes. Then we'll see what you remember after the lights went out. Let me see. Oh, Letty was holding the vase. Uh, no, Bunny. I was holding the pate. Remember, I'd been handing it round. Oh, that's right. Letty was holding the silver platter, not the vase. And then, Miss Bonner? The flash. From the torch? No. Oh. There was a flash, but it must have been the torch, the uh, light bouncing off the silver platter. You know, we always keep it polished. Ah. Then it was dark. He fired his gun at poor Letty. How could anyone do that? You actually saw him fire the gun. I saw the gun fire at Letty. Thank you very much, Miss Bonner. He should be locked up. Bunny, he's dead. Well, serves him right. He tried to murder Letty. <laughs> you were by the door. Have a few drinks. I'm there to now. <coughs> Whatever you say, but you were by the door. Uh, yes, uh, no, I, I was by the door, but he told me to move away from it. After the first two shots, he brushed past me and I tried to chip him up. And that's when you think he fell? Yes, I suppose so. And after that, you went out to mend the fuse? Uh, yes, I didn't mend it, I simply switched the fuses around. It's quickly and easier. Easy for me, of course, as I knew where the fuse box was, had to open it, which circuits were connected. You're Miss Simmons' brother? Yilda. Miss Blacklock's nephew. No. I understood you were. Oh, he's my second cousin, Inspector. Uh, Patrick's mother's my first cousin. We call her Aunt because, well, our mother always referred to her as that, so when we came here, well... When did you come to live here, exactly? Three months, I should think. So, three of you have really only known each other since about June or July this year? Well, I didn't know there was children, Inspector. I see. Would you mind returning to the way you were when the shots were fired? Well, that was a very narrow escape, wasn't it? Yes, I was extremely fortunate. Right. Well, that wasn't too painful, was it? We can go. You can, but you all stay in the village, won't you? Don't take a sudden and unexpected holiday or anything like that. Excuse me, Inspector. Yes, Miss Marple. You questioned me. Ah, but you didn't turn up until after the uh, action. Suppose I was lying. Suppose I was really she's a accomplice. I could easily have locked Mitzi in the dining room. I could have hidden for a while. I know the layout of this house and then just pretended to turn up after it was all over. In that case, I'll put you under arrest. But I didn't, and I wasn't his accomplice. In that case, you are free to go. How very disappointing. You're having a game with me, Inspector. And you with me, Miss Marple. Don't worry, I shall question you when I'm ready. Very well. Thank you again, everyone. I shall be speaking to you all again soon. Oh, oh, Miss Blackhawk, I'd like you to stay. Do sit down, Miss Blackhawk. Miss Blackhawk. Yes? I believe it's cards on the table tie. I'm not sure what I know what you mean, Inspector. I think you do. Someone tried to kill you last night. No. No, Inspector. I think there's no doubt of it. But why? If Rudy Shears had wanted to kill me, why wait till last night? Why do I have witnesses? What makes you think it was Rudy Shears? Well, wasn't it? Did place the advertisement in the Gazette. You see, it sort of proves my point. If he had wanted to kill me, why not wait until I was behind a bush somewhere no one was around? Uh, no, it makes no sense. I, I think you're wrong. He didn't come here to kill me. Someone could have put him up to it. Put him up to it? Yes. Someone who wanted you dead and was prepared to pay Ruby Shears to do the job. You see, I'm not so sure his death was an accident. How could it be anything but that? He sh tripped and shot himself. No. Supposing there was someone else, and supposing this someone had assumed he'd done his job and killed you. Wouldn't it be safer to shoot Rudy Shears so there is no possibility of him being caught by the police and telling us the truth? I see what you mean. You agree with me then? No. Because why? Why would anyone want to kill me? I have a feeling you might be able to answer that. I can't. I have no enemies that I know of. I'm friendly with everyone in the village. Who gets your money if you die? Really, Inspector, is that necessary? Please, Miss Blacklock, indulge me. Answer the question. Patrick and Julia. I see. But I might add that Miss Bonner gets a small annuity and some furniture. Should we add her to the suspect list as well? It just doesn't make sense.
make any sense, Inspector. I have nothing left to leave. Frankly, I'm not worth murdering. But nevertheless, all three of them benefit. And not all of them would harm a hair on my head. You'd be surprised what people will do for money. Really, Inspector, you're insulting people that I love and trust, yes, with my life. Have you got anything of great value, then? Nothing. Those pearls you're wearing? They're priceless. Oh. But only to me. I don't expect you to understand this, Inspector, but they were my sisters. They somehow keep me close to her. I like to think I'm not insensitive, but I still think someone's trying to kill you. Could you come back to the wall, please? You see, if he merely intended to frighten you and everyone else, he could have simply fired the shots into the ceiling. But think, the clock struck the half hour, everyone turned to it, the lights went out, the door swung open. Miss Marble! Give me that gun! It's a toy, it flies pieces of potato. What is this all about? I couldn't help but wonder how that young man could be in three places at once, fusing the lights, locking Mitzi in the dining room, and opening this door with a gun in one hand and a torch in the other. I couldn't. I had to put the gun down, open the door, and pick it up after. It seems to me he was a very athletic young man. Your point, Miss Marple. Inspector, that's praise indeed. Tell me, do you think it's possible that Ruby Shears had an accomplice? Miss Marple? Yes. Would you like my job? Yes, but I never make a policeman. Oh, you think not? I'm not tall enough. I started on that little charade in the hopes that it might help prove my theory that Rudy Shears came here to murder Miss Blacklock. I've been trying to convince you of that myself. Perhaps now you believe that it's not just the ratings of an hysterical old copper. Someone is waiting to murder you. It can happen any time now. Just because Miss Marple agrees with you doesn't mean you're right. I'm trying to save your life. I believe that too, Miss Blacklock. Somewhere there's a reason, and you know it. It may be hidden deep in your mind, but somehow we've got to bring it out. There's no reason, I'm sure. Please, think. But I understand that one day you could inherit millions. Miss Marble. Miss Bunny was saying when we were having coffee at the Bluebird Coffee House. Trust Bunny. I should have to do something about her. Why have you been keeping something back from me? It's nothing. Nothing to do with this case. In fact, it's most unlikely to happen. Do I have to ask Miss Marple or Miss Bunny for the details? What Miss Marple is referring to is Randall Godler's will. Randall Godler? He was a financier, Inspector. Very flamboyant. Hailed as a genius in the city. Yes, I was his secretary for nearly 20 years. He made millions. But without him, it might never have happened. Well, Miss Marple, you seem very well informed. Why don't you tell the Inspector? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. <sighs> no, there's no need. Anyway, I loaned Randall some money in his early days, everything that I had. He was up against it, and everyone thought he would lose everything, but he didn't. He left a fortune when he died. To whom? His wife, Belle, in trust for her during her lifetime. When she dies, it goes to me. And you believe this has nothing to do with the shooting? How can it? Rudy didn't know me very well, or Randall Godler, and his will was not made public. Can be looked up in Somerset House. Tell me, how does Mrs. Goldman feel towards you? Well, uh, we were always great friends. Miss Bunner was saying her health wasn't too good at the moment. Yes, poor Belle. She never was very strong. Though Randall always said she'd outlive us all, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, the trouble is, she has a hard time remembering anyone or anything at the moment. I should go visit her, poor Belle, but their house is always in Scotland. Uh, you know, Inspector, I've had a very good reason for murdering Belle for years. Yes, so if she dies, you get everything. Well, most of it. What happens if you die before she does? It goes to Pip and Emma. Who? I know, it does sound funny. Randall had a sister, Sonia. They fell out when she married a man named Dimitri Stamfordis. He sounds Greek, but he wasn't. He was a real rogue. Randall hated him. So he cut Sonya out of his will? Yes, but it didn't matter. She was rich in her own right. Anyway, the last we heard from them, she had given birth to twins and she was deliriously happy. Pip and Emma? Yes. It must have been a joke between the couple. One child was born just before midnight and one just after. 
So there's a young man and young woman somewhere outstanding to become millionaires. If? If you die before Belle Gogler. Tell me, does anyone know where Sonia and her husband are now? No, the last I heard of them, they were living somewhere in Eastern Europe. And how old would Pip and Emma be now? Uh, 25, 26, somewhere in there. They must be found. Have you any idea what they look like? No, there were no photographs. And even if there were, it won't help us identify them now. What did Sonia look like? They might resemble her. Oh, Sonia. She was very temperamental. Dark hair and very beautiful. Pip and Emma. Oh, Sonia, Inspector. Supposing her husband, Dimitri Stamphilis, wasn't it? You said he was a rogue. Supposing that he went through all her money, clearly she would stand to gain if you died first. Dimitri would too? Yes. So there are at least four people who would benefit from your death, Miss Blacklock. Yes. Well, you can't just count Patrick and Julia now. If I die before Belle, they'll get only a pittance. I don't believe in discounting anyone at this stage. I'd advise you to do the same. Is something the matter? Uh, no, Mitty. Why you look at me so strange? I hadn't realized. It's nothing, Mitty. Just a moment, Mitty. What do you want, police line? Have you any relations in this country? Why do you want to know? Any family? My family is dead. Massacre! I understood they were sent to Siberia. Who told you? Miss Bunner. You mean you have no one? Brother or something? I am alone. No English relatives. Distant cousin, perhaps? Me? English? <laughs> if it weren't so funny, I'd be insulted! At some point, I'll need to see all your papers. Everything is in order! I check the Museum of Glacier Authorities every three months! Calm down. It's routine. I'm obliged to do it. You think I do this thing? This murder? Very well! Arrest me! Put in the handcuffs! Good. You are arresting her, are you, Inspector? I don't care! Arrest me! Put your hands down. I'm not in the mood. Well, you should arrest her. She stole the cup. I did not steal anything, you stupid old woman! Mitzi! No! I don't care! She accuses me of stealing! I do not! Honey, what is this all about? Oh, it's one of your favorite coffee cups, Letty. It's missing. They were all out on the Welsh dresser in the kitchen, and she won't let anyone go in there. There were six, and now there are only five. <sighs> Mitzi, what is this all about? I won't be angry to do great on <laughs> First murder, and now it's this? Why? Because I am foreign, that's the truth. It is her, she's the screwy one. She put it somewhere for God about it. She should be locked up. Mitzi, you're being very rude. Apologize to Miss Bunner now. No, you find someone else. I'm not blocking your doorstep any longer. I'm sorry about that outburst. She's always like that. I'm afraid she can't leave. Oh, she won't. She's just an explosive person. And a liar. You should check up on her, Inspector. I dare say we'd all be surprised if we knew the truth about her. Well, she does make very good coffee. It's the only thing she doesn't put garlic in. Uh, in Miss Marple? I'd love some, thank you. Inspector? Not right now, if you don't mind. I'd like to take another look around. Would you show me the rest of the house? Oh, yes. Bunny, will you pour the coffee? Yes. You like it black, don't you? No, I like it white. I don't know how you drink it black. I've always liked mine with lots of cream and sugar. Letty was always teasing me about my uh, sweet tooth when we, we were younger. I remember. Not many friendships last as long as yours has. She rescued me, you know. For what? I was destitute. Surely not. Don't you believe me? Oh, yes, of course. She's so good, not only to me, everyone. She does seem to take rather a lot of people under her wing. She's too trusting, too trusting by far. She doesn't seem the type to me who's easily fooled. She's not a woman of the world, you know, not like us. But if she worked for Anne Gobler all those years. Oh, yes, she did. Who told you that? You did, the other day. Well, it's a secret, don't tell anyone. Poor Lottie, poor, poor Lottie. Whenever I think of her, that poem comes to mind. What poem's that, Miss Bunner? Oh, why, it's the one that goes, in sad affliction, bravely born. What sad affliction? What? Sad affliction. Oh, all those years carrying after her sister, only she would have done it. Tuberculosis, wasn't it? She gave up everything, everything. Nobody appreciates her, not like I do. That Patrick, he's always taking advantage of her. He seems such a nice young man. Huh. Well, he, he keeps borrowing money from Letty and never paying it back. It wouldn't surprise me if he put that fruity shares up to coming here last night. 
Oh, he's playing practical jokes. They were probably going to share the proceeds to pay Letty the money he owes her. At least like all the young people these days, there's no respect for anything. They don't have it all that easy, you know. Come look at this. See what one of them did to this beautiful table. Right over here, it's a cigarette burn. It's only the young people who smoke in this house. What a shame, it was such a beautiful piece. Yes, so is this. Dresden, we have two, a shepherd here and a shepherdess in the spare room. Oh, no, this is the shepherdess, Miss Bonner. Oh dear, oh dear, I always thought the shepherd was in this room. Oh, this dreadful business, Miss Marvel, I'm more confused than ever. Dear. My goodness, I am sorry, Miss Bonner, the violet have died. Oh, how silly of me, I forgot to water them. But, no wonder. Well, never mind. I'll bring you a little more. And I think I know someone who can repair that, so you've never known it had been damaged. That would be lovely. <clears throat> well, I really ought to be going now. Must you? It's so nice to have someone to talk to who understands. I have some shopping to do. Oh, no, not that one. It's been sealed up for years. This table used to be in front of it. And let people know they couldn't get through. Seems like a good idea. Oh, it was, but Philippa suggested it would be better here. She said it would integrate the rooms more. You see, it was two rooms originally. Is there a key? The builders were very clever. You see, the same key fits all the locks on the downstairs rooms, but there's a different key for each lock in the upstairs rooms. Very clever. I'll show you. You see, it's very stiff, but you still can't get through. What are you doing? This door's been open. I, I really am terribly sorry. No, no, it's all my fault, Letty. I was explaining to Miss Marple about Philippa's suggestion she moved the table. It's all my fault, Miss Blacklock. Please don't blame Miss Butter. I really am sorry. Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry. With all this been going on, I'm afraid of this awful rot. My nerves are a little on edge, too. Uh, this door hasn't been opened since the last century when they integrated the two rooms. Ah, oh, Miss Bonner, there you are. My sergeant's found your missing coffee cup in the bushes by the duck pond. Oh, how lovely. I should have asked you to find it in the first place, shouldn't I? You being the detective. Yes, it's all part of the job. We find missing butter cups as well. Uh, but what was my missing coffee cup doing there, Inspector? Using my obvious powers of detection, I would say someone threw it there. Have you an idea why there should be oil in it, Miss Blackwell? I think I have, Inspector. Surprise me, Miss Marple. The hinges have been oiled quite recently, I'd say. What? So it opened more silently. So that means if Rudy Shears had an accomplice, he could have been hanging in this room last night. Why should he need to use this door? Well, whoever he is, he's the only one who knows this door could be open, and he may try to use it again. Let's hope I can hear what he does. Ah, 11.30. I must be getting back to the station. Do you like a lift, Miss Marble? Yes, thank you. Oh, the ducks! I've forgotten to feed them again. Uh, can I help you, Letty? Yes, of course. Poor creatures, they must be wondering what's gone wrong today.
was a lovely birthday present, Letty. I am sorry, Bunny. It would have been more if I'd been able to get into the shops yesterday. No, no. A box of handkerchiefs was just what I wanted. I'll, um, I'll get you something on Monday, Bunny. Oh, no, Patrick. I don't want you to put yourself to any trouble. Only the inspector left us out earlier. I, I really am sorry, Bunny. Yes, I'm sorry, too. About the party as well. We could have gone ahead of it, could we? No, no, that's what I said. I'll have to cancel my party after this dreadful business. I don't mind. It doesn't upset me. No. Did you see why we could not go along with it? I mean, a man none of us knew came here, tried to rob us, nearly killed that Letty, and just because he got what he deserved, you said, well, Bunny has to suffer. I can't believe you can you be so insensitive, Patrick. Oh, I can be quite sensitive sometimes. I've seen the way you and Edmund sweating and we've looked at each other. What's wrong, Patrick? Are you jealous? <laughs> Whatever it is, a lover's tip, he most certainly isn't that. Oh, careful, darling. You want to say about the lady who does protest too much. Oh, dear, please don't argue. I have such a headache. What with all those questions and that dreadful shooting? Oh, well, the pain. <coughs> it's really quite devastating. Why don't you take something for it, then, Bunny? No, no. I shall be all right. Don't be silly. Oh, well, I can't find my aspirins anywhere, Letty. There's some aspirin on my bedside table. Oh, thank you, but I'm quite capable of withstanding it. Of course you are, but why suffer? Well, uh, shall I go, Bunny? No, no. The least I can do is get them myself. No. You mean you don't have a world that was black luck? She surprised me this time, holding on so long to mentioning her headache. But you said she loved a stinker, and you were right. It's a shame we can have a birthday party. She was looking forward to it so much. Yes, I am glad that it was her idea to cancel it. I mean, where's that harm? Maybe if we had just a small party, just cake and tea for the family. Oh, you two are up to no end. Only a teeny tiny party. Oh, blast you, you make me feel dreadful. I'll buy you most of them, don't you? Go away. Got that tea. Anyway, so why not? Good. Go get Julie and have a tell Mitty that we're going to have cake after all. Right now? Uh, Philippa, I, I don't mean to be inquisitive, but is there something wrong? Well, does it have something to do with your son? No, he, he's fine. He loves his school. The fees, well, obviously they're a bit of a problem. Ah, then there is something. It'll be all right. Anything you tell me will be in the strictest of confidence. There's nothing to tell, really. I have something to say that may put your mind to ease. My troubles aren't anything I can't cope with. I know you're very independent, Philippa. I may not be able to help you much now, but possibly soon. Please, don't give another thought. I shall be able to manage. I want you to know I've spoken to my solicitor. I'm changing my will. Apart from Bunny's legacy, everything goes to you. Me? But you can't be serious. It's all taken care of. I don't want it. You mustn't do this. For a Patrick and Julia. They have no claim on me. You are now the main beneficiary. Why? Why are you telling me all this? Well, I don't think it's at all a bad idea for people to know that I'm changing my will. I can't let you do it. Philippa, there's a very good reason for what I'm doing. You may not understand it now, but if I die, you'll get nothing. If I live, you'll run into a lot of money one day. Die? You're not going to die. You never know. Here is Mrs. Marple, Mrs. Wettingham, and Edmund Wettingham. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Miss Marple, Clara, what a surprise. Is there something wrong? Wrong? I'm sure when the three of us sit up here these days, it does seem as if trouble isn't very far behind. Well, I certainly hope it is. I've had enough for one weekend. It's all my fault, dropping in like this. I called round to Clara and Edmonds and suggested, hope you don't mind. It just seemed such a shame, Miss Butter having to cancel her party. We each brought her a present. I'm afraid it's uh, nothing very exciting. Oh, but how kind. We won't stay, of course. Oh, but you must stay for Bunny's party. She would be so delighted. We'd love to stay, thank you. Uh, yes. Would that be all right with you, Philippa? Oh, well, yes, of course. Good. Well, I suppose we're going to have a party after all. Not a party, just tea. Oh, by the way, Letty, did you find the honey? Oh, no, I didn't, Clara. Thank you very much. I forgot it. I came in the back door and I couldn't find you anywhere. <laughs> How silly of me to forget to 
leave it in the first place. Me and Edmund got all the way home before we noticed. Didn't we, Edmund? Yes, Mother, and I'm sure it could have waited until some other time. But it was your idea? Yeah. Well, we needed it anyway. Mitzi always puts honey in her special cake. You see? Well, Miss Marple, looks like this time you'll be at the kill. Don't say things like that, Edmund. That's something we'd all wish to forget. How can we? It's far from over. I'm afraid you're right, Edmund. I'm sure the inspector is satisfied. I don't think he is. He thinks it would pay pretty shares to kill Letty. No try again. You shouldn't have mentioned that, Patrick. Good God, that puts us all under suspicion. I'm afraid Inspector Craddock has to include all of us here now. Yes. How long are we on the hall, Miss Marple? You only have your word for it that you come up the drive on the short of five. My dear boy, I'm sure I'm very high on his list. Really? And he seems to get on so well with him. I think he finds me mildly amusing. Uh, Patrick, why don't you see if mine's coming? Surely there's not going to be any more unpleasantness? And by that, do you mean any more murders, Mother? Do you have to? Uh, well, I'm sure it's all over now, so let's just forget about it and try to enjoy ourselves. Just kidding. Happy birthday, buddy! Oh, but I cancelled my party! We're going to have some cake and tea, buddy. Oh, what a lovely surprise! And here's a little something to wish you a very happy birthday, Miss Bunner. Thank you, that is kind. I'm afraid it's only handkerchiefs. Just what I wanted. <laughs> it's just apples from the garden. It's a lovely thought. <laughs> and I've brought you honey. How kind! I'm afraid it's only half a job. The bees aren't so very busy just now. Well, it can't be helped. I must take these ass. We're not in a thumping headache still. Oh, Patrick, there's some soda water on the sidewalk. Why aren't I silly having a headache on my birthday? It's a show which is too worried about Patrick. This is what I don't want to be Thank you.
What are we going to do? We'll think of something. I feel bound to find out. It can't last much longer. Don't worry. Don't worry, Patrick, for God's sake. Panicking will get us nowhere. You will help me, won't you? I've, I've done everything you've asked. I know. You've been wonderful. I need you. It's not going back. Can't stop now. What's done is done. I did it for you. Ah, good morning, Miss Simmons. How are you, Mr. Simmons? <laughs> well, thank you. Have you found out anything more? We've made progress. We're not interrupting anything, are we? <laughs> <laughs> no. Well. Right, we'll go uh, feed the ducks or something. Mr. Simmons. Yes? Did you know you've got lipstick on your collar? I, I didn't. I, I guess I, I forgot to put a new shirt on this morning. Well, we can't blame you, can you, Miss Simmons? Hardly. Well, the ducks. By the way, Miss Simmons. Yes? You work in the pharmacy at the local hospital, is that right? That's right. Thank you very much. There are more urgent things. Now, Miss Blackhawk. I'm not really up to answering any of your questions today, Inspector. I'll be as brief as I can, but you've had another lucky escape. I'm finding it more and more difficult to accept your reasoning. How could I possibly be the intended victim this time? Any one of us could have eaten that cake first. I know that. Uh, and Patrick's suggestion that Clara poisoned the honey is absolutely malicious. I agree. Then how did the cake get poisoned, didn't it? It wasn't the cake. It was these. My aspirin? Exactly. Your aspirin. The ones you usually keep by your bed. No. No. Someone wants you dead very, very badly. I'm frightened. At last. Perhaps that will help me find the murderer. I haven't been purposefully uncooperative. I just couldn't just imagine that anyone would try. There's no friendship where money's concerned. Tell me, are you aware that Belgola's condition has deteriorated recently? I knew she wasn't well. I understand from the Scotch police she's now seriously ill. Oh, poor Belle, I should go visit her. It could be poor Miss Blacklock. But Pip and Emma. Yes, they're uppermost in my mind, but it could be a combination of them and their parents who are trying to kill you. The father, Dimitri Stamfordis, said he was a rogue, but he'd go as far as murder to get money. I'll do anything you say, Inspector. Good. You must try to remember anything you can about him, Sonia, and Pip and Emma. Anything and everything, but the son and daughter in particular. They're uppermost in my mind. Have you any photographs of them? Well, Bel Godel is more likely to have photographs of them than I am. I'm afraid you're almost completely blank with her. They allowed the police up to search the house. They found nothing. Have you anything? What well, I'm hoping is that Pip may take after his father, or Emma her mother. Or the other way around. Exactly. Uh, well, there is an old book somewhere, but it must be buried. Find it. It'll take me a little while. Would you like some help? <coughs> no. Let's relook first. Yes, Miss Hames. Do sit down. Oh, dear, this sounds serious. If you lie about something, Miss Hames, you must cover your tracks very, very carefully. I, I do understand. Yes, you do understand. Don't lie anymore. You know what I'm talking about. Everyone says we have more freedom nowadays. The world is more understanding than it's ever been. Well, Inspector Craddock, if you try being an unmarried mother. <laughs> I don't think it would work. It isn't easy in a small village. So, you invented a husband. How do you think Nettie Blackhawk would react to she the truth? She strikes me as a sympathetic and understanding person. What's more, she's certainly no fool. I have a sneaking suspicion she may have guessed the truth. So, that's why. What? She's so kind to me. Not many like her. Does your son know the truth? He believes his father died. Silly. He'll find out sometime. Maybe. My advice to you is to tell him, and everyone else. Will you tell him if I don't? It isn't a crime. I certainly could have lived with it, but it's up to you. How did you find out? We do a lot of routine work. You've been checking up on me? Sort of. You make it sound very casual. It isn't, but it is puzzling. Puzzling? It's only a small thing, but I'm sure it can help. It's about your son's birth certificate. Yes? It gives the mother's name as a Philippa Haynes. Well, that's me. Uh, in that case, there is a problem. You see, we can't find a birth certificate for anyone with your name. Well, 
not on the correspondence of what we know about you. I found it. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Your timing is perfect. Miss Haynes and I have just finished. For the time being. Are there any photos of Sonia and her husband? I haven't had a chance to look through it yet. Is that her? Uh, no, that's Belle. Wasn't she beautiful? Belle at Skye? Yes, that's her place in Scotland. I'm afraid the writing is rather faded. Sonia Dimitri. Dimitri. Belle Dimitri Sonia. Skye. Belle, Self, and Sonia. Someone's gone to this ahead of you, haven't they, Miss Blacklock? Yes, it looks as though they've been all ripped out. Letters. Oh, they'll be for my sister. If you've no objection, I'd like to skim through these. Uh, well. There could be something about Dimitri or Sonia. Miss Blacklock! Not now, Lucy. I don't want to be interrupted at the moment. I not interrupt! I give you the sound! I go! Uh, Mitzi! Oh, she can't go. Certainly not. Uh, I'll go after her. Good. And when you catch up with her, you might tell her she won't get any further than the bus station. Some people say I'm like a bad penny. Well, not me, Miss Marple. Not me. I passed Miss Blacklock. She told me to come in. That girl of hers, Mitzi, was staring down the drive like a maniac. She is rather peculiar, isn't she? Well, no matter. Now that you're here, you can make yourself useful and help me with your research. Certainly. But I do have to talk to Miss Blacklock. It won't take long. I don't think you'd want to pass up the opportunity of going through someone else's old letters. Inspector, that's not like me. Who's <laughs> They'll be from Miss Blacklock to her sister, Charlotte. If you find anything that may be interesting, as well as helpful, read it out to me, please. Very well. This song has been mentioned before. Oh. It refers to her disfigurement. Charlotte's, that is. It's not as bad as you think it is, and you shouldn't lock yourself away. I wonder what it was, this disfigurement. Doesn't say. Don't suppose it was anything much. Then why should she walk herself away? In my experience, most women are extremely vain. How would you react, for example, if you had a mole on the end of your nose? I wouldn't have to look at it. Well, most women would hide themselves behind a veil. It's mentioned this one, too. Listen, I do wish you would get out more. No one else notices it. You see, pure vanity. Maybe. Ah, here's what I've been looking for. What is it? It refers to Sonia Golan and that fight she had with her brother. Sonia has such a violent temper, it's quite terrifying sometimes. Did you ever find any photographs of Sonia? They've disappeared, rather conveniently, I'd say. But, violent temper, and Miss Blacklock says she was dark and attractive. Makes you think, doesn't it? Yes, it does indeed, Inspector. Here's something interesting. You can always tell when Sonia is angry. She has the habit of clenching and unclenching her hands. Who does that remind you of? Well, you've got me there. That's something I've missed. And you don't miss much, do you? <laughs> Julia Simmons does it when she's agitated. I'm keeping a very careful watch on that old woman. Well, I've checked up on both Patrick and Julia Simmons. The French police contacted the mother in the south of France and she confirmed they're staying there. Really? There's no mistake? Well, unless the woman in the south of France isn't their mother. Could she be Sonia, keeping out of the way until it's all over? They must have checked up on her. They're very thorough in France. So she is Letty Blacklock's cousin? Well, most certainly. I was hoping we'd found Emma. Although I knew there was always a possibility I was wrong in suspecting Julia. She isn't the only one that does that hand-clenching business. Philip Haynes does it as well. It's very observant of you, Miss Marple. Ten out of ten. It is very frustrating that there isn't a photograph of Sonia. 
Yes, certainly a goat that seems to have disappeared off the face of the earth. may make a lot of difference. Must have been some kind of treatment they used in those days. For what? TB. It is why Miss Blacklock sent her sister to Switzerland. Tell me, who does this remind you of? I must admit, it does look a bit like Clara Swettenham, but... But what? Well, it is an old photograph, Inspector. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Marple. You wanted to see? Yes, please. About the funeral service. <clears throat> well, I must be getting back to the station. I'd like to take these with me and continue looking through them if you don't mind, Miss Blacklock. I shall return them later, don't worry. Thank you, Miss Marple. Goodbye, ladies. Goodbye, Inspector. I am sorry to disturb you at a time like this, but my nephew would like you to know that he's finalised all the arrangements for the service. But it would only like to know which things you'd like. Oh, yes. Lead kindly light was her favourite. You must thank him for me. I'm sorry. Don't. Please don't. It's come over me suddenly what I've lost. Bonnie was my last link to the past, the last one who remembered. Now that she's gone, I'm alone, utterly alone. I understand. Cousins, nieces, nephews are all very well, but when the last person you shared your youth with is finally gone, then you really are alone. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just leaving. Not a matter, can't I take her? No, my dear. There is something I must do. Goodbye, Miss Blacklock. Uh, yes, goodbye. Thank you. Only a media this morning. My team Harry. Sitting forward to coming in at half time. Oh, yes. It only seems like yesterday he went off to school. Let's see, I, I realize it probably isn't the ideal, ideal time to mention it, but it is all right, isn't it? Harry coming in at half time? Uh, Philippa? What's wrong? Well, Patrick and Julia, I think they're upstairs. Why? I don't understand. Please get them for me. Patrick! Julia! But he wants to work with you! Shall I go? No, I'd like to stay. Julia, you won't be a moment. Sit down. Something the matter? I've received this letter. I hope it will be all right for me to come to you on Tuesday. Patrick was going to let me know, but he hasn't. My train arrives about 6.15. Yours affectionately, Julia. God. This is from your sister? I'm afraid so. Then who is the young woman upstairs? I should explain. Do. I know it was a stupid thing to do, but Julia, my real sister, didn't want to take up the job at the hospital here. You see, she was offered a job up north at some theatre as an assistant stage manager. She's always been stage struck. She knew Mother would be furious if she took it. Then who is that young woman? I'm trying to get to that. We didn't come straight here when we came back to England. There's fantasy parties to go to. That's where we met the one upstairs to me. I heard I'd rather fell for each other, and seeing as she wasn't doing anything in particular, it seemed like a marvelous idea for the girls to swap identities. I liked it for obvious reasons. And if Mother believed my sister was here, well, she couldn't object. I was going to tell you, but I couldn't in these circumstances. Who is that young woman? Well... Who are you? I'm Emma Stamfordis.
I'm surprised you decided to stay, Miss Stamfordus. If I tried to make a run for it, you'd only got up with me. You wouldn't have gone out tripping to Leghorn. Are you going to arrest me? I'd like to know where your brother is from. I haven't the faintest idea. If this is misguided family loyalty. Oh, I honestly don't know. Honestly. I bet that's a word that doesn't come easily to you. Well, I know how you must feel about me, but... Please, your brother, Miss Stamfordus. I haven't seen him since we were three years old. When my parents split up, it was decided that I should go with my father and pick with my mother. Let's try something different then. Where is your father? Oh, try the moon. When I was just about old enough to take care of myself, he left me in Istanbul. I worked my way back here. Where was your mother then? Believe me, I'd love to know. I've searched everywhere. She's made a good job of disappearing. I even went to Scotland to see if I could get some information. You went to see Belle? Why not? She's my aunt. I also hoped she might be of help, but it was no use. She's not part of this world anymore. Then I got to thinking of my uncle. Of course, I knew he was very rich. And it occurred to me that if Aunt Bell died, I was probably his only surviving relative. So I went along to Somerset House to look up his will. Was I surprised? I searched everywhere for someone who even knew Letty Blacklock. Then I had the most incredible stroke of luck. Through an acquaintance, I managed to meet Patrick and his sister. When the swap was suggested, I had to stop myself from sounding too eager. Why, I am so proud of you. It must have been so difficult waiting for the right moment to take a pot shot at <sighs> Chipping Clegghorn 58. Yes. Hold on a moment. Inspector, it's for you. Well, got it here. Yes. What? Well, keep me informed. That's a disturbing development. Miss Marple has been missing since she left here this morning. That's nearly seven hours. Here is Mrs. Swettenham and Edmund Swettenham. Thank you, you're welcome. What is it now, Inspector? All in good time. Well, I certainly don't allow policemen to come up to my door and ask me to accompany them. My neighbor shall be tittle-tattling for weeks. Or shall we write in the papers about this? Well, that'll keep you busy for a change, won't it? <laughs> now, Mitzi, I believe you have something to tell us. Mitzi? Yes, I will tell the truth and nothing but the truth. What I see on Friday, I not do. Ha! <laughs> we all know what a little liar she is. Please! I was in the dining room, like I say. When I hear the gunshots go off, I look through the keyhole, and in the little moonlight I could see. I could see Miss Blacklock! Me? Oh, Missy, that's absurd. You couldn't possibly have seen Miss Blacklock. Go on, Mr. Swettingham. Why? Why couldn't she have seen Miss Blacklock? It's because she saw you, wasn't it? Edmund, that's not possible. If Miss Blacklock dies before Belle Gumba, two people stand to benefit. Emma Stanford and you think I'm Pip? That's too fantastic for words. Who told you about Pip, Mr. Swettingham? I certainly haven't, and neither has anyone else in this room. You're wrong, Inspector. I told him. He isn't Pip. I am. What? You wrongly assumed Pip was a boy. Emma, neither the truth. Why didn't you say so? Because I suspected who you were. And the Inspector was right. I was holding back with family loyalty. I didn't want to give you away. You, of all people, Philippa! I'm sorry, Nancy, but my mother died. I was desperate for money. Hers had gone years ago. She told me about the will, and I discovered for myself that Belle Golder was seriously ill. I was, I was prepared to help you both. It was part of our plan to get into your good books. And it worked, didn't it? But I grew fond of you. I didn't even change my will in your favor. That's got me stiff. Because there was a very good reason for doing it. I bet you found out who you really was. You were trying to scare me off and trying to get my girl's money. And you came here to kill me for it! It never occurred to me, though I felt I was more entitled to it than you! But, there it is. I'm Pip, and I'm glad you know. You two have been seeing quite a lot of each other recently, haven't you? Yes. Well, there's no need to suspect anyone, anyone anymore, Inspector. Isn't there? Mr. Swackenham's a struggling young writer, not yet published, who I very much like to marry a rich woman. Nonsense. Oh, You're in debt up to your eyes. That's not true. And I can prove it. The bank, the book has helped me. The rich wife would have solved all your problems, wouldn't it? But not for her to be rich, Miss Blackwell had to die first, and you did something about it. 
No, Edwin, you couldn't. Shall we start with your meeting of Rudy Shears and Tilda, Mr. Sweaty Elm? <laughs> you won't get far. You need to speak to your solicitor as soon as possible, Mrs. Sweatingham. I'm sorry. I understand this must be a great shock. It seems like a bad dream. I'll need to see the two of you down at the station, please. Now. It won't take long. <laughs> Sergeant Mellors, Mr. Simmons, would you take Mrs. Sweatingham home, please? Yes. Yes, of course. Oh, visit to a doctor would do any harm. It's all right, Mrs. Sweatingham. We are to see. Mitzi, you're a magnificent liar. I do well, yes. I do what you say. To the letter. Sorry to have given you such a fright. Uh, no, you are a very clever girl, Mitzi. Thank you, Miss Blackblock. I get you some coffee. You look tired. Yes, that would be nice. Black and strong? Uh, with some milk, please. Yeah, how do you drink it? Or you got? <laughs> well, you can relax now, Miss Blackblock. You are perfectly safe. Thank God. You might have told me you arranged it. Then you would have reacted as you did. It was a little unorthodox, but it worked. And if it hadn't? I'd have been in a bit of a mess, wouldn't I? But what about Miss Marple? Perhaps I've got some news down at the station. I only hope she didn't find out about Edmund Sweatcombe before we did. Uh, but you will let me know if anything comes up? Of course. See you in the morning. Goodbye, Inspector. Miss Blacklock, nice and strong. I put just a little milk in. Oh, thank you, Mitzi. Who want to drop or two? I take the liberty. I do myself some. Yes, of course. Now, Miss Blacklock, we have a nice little chat. Oh? I need money. Lots of money. Why tell me? I think you will help. Uh, but I haven't got any money, Mitty. Not to spare, that is. But soon you'll be rich, very rich, and then you give me my money. <clears throat> I don't think I will. But you will! I help you, now you help me! But I pay you, tell me, Mitty, with the cooking and the cleaning. No, no, no. That is not what I mean. Just now, the inspector told me to say a big whopper. But it isn't a lie. Not this time. You don't know the truth is, Mitzi. Oh, I think I do. The inspector come up to me. He say, Mitzi, you are a good liar. I say, yes. You tell lie for me, he say. You see Miss Black walk in the hole through the keyhole. Well, you did your part very well, Mitzi, but I shan't be paying you for it. But you will. He tell me to lie, but I didn't. I saw you in the hole with the gun in your hand. Give me my money. I go to America and see my brother. You never hear from me again. Oh, Mitty, but you see the trouble is you don't have a brother. So if I give you the money, you'll just spend it all and come back begging for more. I see you in the hole with the gun. Give me the money or call the police. Very well. Get out. 
out of my house now. Miss Marple. 
When Willie Shears came here to ask for his airfare, it was her suit. Fine, you said. Next Friday is the 13th, and I'm giving a party for my friends. I want to give them a thrill. You put an advert in the paper saying that a murder is to take place here at 6.30. Then turn up. I'll use the lights, and you pretend it's a hold-up. It'll scare them stiff. Then I'll give you your money. Do go on, Miss Marple. It's very amusing. You fused the lights, as I explained, went through this door, quickly along the passage, looked Mitzi in the dining room, came back into the room through this door, and then fired two shots at yourself, except you weren't there. Then how do you account for the bullet nicking my ear? It was too obvious. Everyone knows the ear lobe bleeds profusely when cut. A pair of scissors would do the trick. Then, you shot Rudy Shears at point-blank range. This is all very amusing, Miss Marple. Do feel free to tell the inspector all that you've told me. He'll chalk it up to the rantings <coughs> of a senile old woman. Because we both know there's no proof. Oh, no. Do you remember Bunny's favorite quotation? In sad affliction, bravely born. Not only is Switzerland famous for curing TB, in a letter to you from Letitia, she mentions iodine treatment. It baffled me for a while, but a little research and I discovered that Swiss doctors were famous for perfecting a very special glandular operation for goiter. Miss Marple! I'm perfectly sure that when the records are checked, it was Lottie instead of Letty who was successfully operated on for a goiter. <laughs> it is a shame that you interfered. You're missing. Presumed dead. Edmund Sweatingham <clears throat> stabbed you and dumped you in the river. All right, Miss Blacklock, it's all over. You interfere. Don't grab me, Inspector. Are you all right, Miss Marple? Yes, thank you. You did very well. All right, everyone, you can come out now. It's all over. No idea what you've put me through. I shall never forgive you. Never. I'm sorry, Mother. I could hardly tell you what we're up to. You would have never agreed to my doing it. How could you have deceived me like that? I promised I'd help the inspector on the condition that I got the facts first. I'm convinced someone here has a fascinating novel written, and if I don't write it, someone else will. What does the inspector want with us now? <coughs> the inspector told me to come in with these. How do you like my acting, huh? You were acting, Gritty. Yes, I was especially good when I was blackmailing Miss Blackbook. I'd quit the kitchen. I'd go to the stage. <laughs> I owe you an apology, Mrs. Sweatingham. I really am sorry, but the fewer the people who knew about us off to you, the better. That's why I couldn't tell you either, Miss Haynes. Supposing I hadn't come to Edmund's rescue and admitted to being picked. There was no real danger of that, now was there? Well, now the drop here, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Sergeant Mellows, I think you'd be all be in the mood to enjoy it now. Delicious death. It's already hot, so dig in. Mrs. Swetnam? No, thank you. I'm on a diet. Please. Sergeant. Funny people.
right, right. 